What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Now lately, I've been hearing a lot of whirring noise when I first started up the Land Cruiser. I don't know where it's coming from, but it does get a little bit softer as the car warms up. I'm thinking it's the power steering pump, so uh, I'm going to change that out first and see how that goes. Um, let me show you an example of what it's doing right now. First thing you want to do is get underneath the car and take out this metal skid plate. It's held in by these 12 millimeter bolts that go all the way around the side. Right on top of the alternator is the power steering pump. So just to make it easier, I'm going to take off this plate right here, uh, the airbox, and this guy right here, so I can get to the power steering pump, which is right here on the bottom. Okay, so now we're going to take out the air box. Um, what you have to do is take off this hose clamp first. Just loosen it a little bit, it should be fine. And then after that, take off these four clips. And it should lift all the way up and come out. So this will be a good time to change your air filter if you haven't done it yet, but it's right there. Okay, so after you take off these vacuum hoses right here, um, there's two bolts that hold this thing in. There's one way at the back, it's a 10 millimeter, and there's one to the side right here. So this one I've already taken off, but they're gonna get the one to the back. After you take that off, this thing will be loose, and then you gotta take off this hose clamp. comes out and the whole thing comes out with the air box out you can see the power steering pump clearly right here this is one of the pressure lines but in order to get all that stuff out we need to remove this belt right here and um, to do that we need to pull on the tensioner and as you can see right here according to this graph this guy is the tensioner it's got a left hand screw, so uh, it's not lefty loosey righty tighty, it's the opposite way. Okay, so you can see where I put the ratchet on is the tensioner. Take the belts off like that. And then the belt will come loose. This is a good time to inspect your belt to see if there's any cracks. This one looks okay still. I don't know when it was changed last, but uh, looks okay. So according to this new pump, um, this is where the banjo bolt goes in. You've got your low pressure hose right here. And these three holes, I'm assuming they're for the mounting point. So what we'll have to do is look for these three bolts on the power steering pump itself, and uh, we should be able to take it out. Now, because the pulley is still on here, uh, on the old pump, there's two slots in the pulley. You can kind of rotate it since the belt is off now. And once you can see, once you can get your tool through uh, this, uh, through the hole to this bolt, then you'll be able to loosen it out. So you have to do them one at a time. Okay, see how I can put my 14 millimeter socket through the hole on the pulley and get it on that mounting bolt. And what you want to do is try to loosen it up. Don't take it out all the way first, just loosen it up. And 
then the next one, can you see that? It's right there. It's like a, the three o'clock position, I guess. Let's crack it loose. Right there. So those two are loose. Now there's one more on the bottom. I'm going to see if I can get it by feel or if I need to get underneath the car. I think that's it right there. Let's see if I can crack this guy loose. Oh yeah. So now our steering pump itself is loose. So all we need to do now is unhook the lines and let the fluid drain out before we, before we remove it completely. This banjo bolt, I'm sure there's tons of different ways to do this to uh, let the uh, fluid out of the pump and the assembly, but uh, the easiest one to get to is this banjo bolt for right now. So this one is a size 22. You'll have to take this one off regardless. Um, I'm just worried about the mess that's gonna make underneath. So. I have a bucket, some cardboard, and um, yeah, let's hope for the best. Okay, so we finally got this bolt loose. Um, it actually took a little bit more than I expected because this tab, if you can see right here, is supposed to be welded onto the uh, pump itself. And basically that holds this banjo in place so it doesn't spin around when I try to loosen this guy. Well, that weld broke, so I had to use a wrench underneath and hold it tight. So now, I got it. Watch out, there's gonna be these uh, copper washers, one on the top, one on the bottom. You should get new ones, but I don't have them, so I think we're okay. There we go, there's the other one, copper washer. Just clean these guys up, and you can usually reuse these. So now all the bolts have come out. I'm gonna try to wiggle this guy out maybe. It's dripping everywhere, but that's why we have a bucket underneath. And ta-da! So here is the power steering pump. That's completely out. Now what we'll need to do, this pulley we'll need to reuse. So I'll need to break it off. It's a 17 mil. And because like it's out of the car right now, there's no belt holding it tight, it'll continue spinning if I try to use the impact on it. So what I'm gonna try to do is just maybe wedge a uh, extension in like this to stop it from spinning and kind of just hold it too. You don't wanna just rely on this guy or have a small screwdriver because you don't wanna bend, uh, possibly bend uh, the pulley. So, you know, just kind of hold it, have the uh, extension in there for backup and uh, we'll see how it goes. There we go. That wasn't uh, too tight at all, so came off pretty easy. Okay. Pulley comes out. Ta -da. Now with the pulley off, you can see side by side, they're almost identical except for this hose. Now the hoses we will be replacing with a regular pieces of hose, not this preformed hose from Toyota, mainly because the preformed hose from Toyota is like $50 um, just for this. And because um, we're using the sleeve bracket, we can't really bend this to where we need it to be. So might as well just get some regular hose um, from AutoZone or something. Um, but right now, what we're going to do is put the pulley back on and uh, get it ready to install. So right here is the old pump. I finally got these hoses out of the car. So these two are low pressure hoses. So they're not high pressure or anything. As you can see, um, it's just clamped on with these clamps on both ends. Um, on the Toyota website, you can't buy this one without buying the hardline itself. So um, I don't know why. 
Um, so I decided to go uh, aftermarket hose. Um, same diameter, inner diameter. The smaller one is a 3 8 and the larger one is a 5 8 And I got these uh, from AutoZone, so you can check them out. Buy them by, uh, you can buy them, they're bulk, so you can just buy it how many, however many feet you want. Um, I usually buy them a little bit longer than what these guys are. The only reason is so that um, I can, because they're not formed, you have to route them a little different. So um, that's that. Um, now to uh, try to put these on. Okay, so so far I have the new pump with the old pulley on there, as you can see. I've got one of the hoses tied up on the uh, power steering pump already. And the other hose is actually in the car uh, hooked up to the rack already. So uh, next step is to put this guy in. So, so far I have put all three of these bolts hand tight uh, back in and it's holding up the power steering pump. Now I just have to tighten these guys. So the power steering pump is in. Next, we have to hook up this guy, this banjo. Now make sure, like I said before, you have to clean off uh, your banjo bolt and uh, take out these little washers. If you're planning to reuse them, take them out and clean them up a little bit. There's one on underneath the banjo and one on top. So make sure um, you have them both in. If not, it's gonna leak like hell. So uh, I'm gonna have to need two hands on this. Um, I will cut to once I have it installed. Okay, we have the power steering pump back in. We've now got the hoses all hooked up. And these are aftermarket hoses. These are just ones that I bought from AutoZone that are for like general power steering ones. So they're not preformed. So when you install them, make sure that they're not kinked up so you won't uh, starve the uh, power steering pump of fluid. Um, this one is not much of an issue, but it's mainly this one because it's a lot thicker and short and it needs to make like basically 290 degrees almost. So make sure that's not kinked up. But other than that, it's pretty straightforward. Um, now I have to hook up the vacuum lines and the uh, air box, air box. Make sure one, two, three, four vacuum lines are hooked back up and we should be all good. Now we're almost all done. All we need to do is plug in the mass airflow sensor. Don't forget that or else your car won't run right. Okay. And then we're gonna fill up this guy, which is the power steering reservoir. This guy requires, I don't know if you guys can see that, it says Dexron type ATF, fill to proper level. Now I'm gonna show you guys how to fill this guy properly without breaking your power steering pump or the power steering rack. So give me just one second, let me set this up. Also, don't forget to put your skid plate back in. Now you wanna jack up your car, at least the front. The goal is you want zero resistance of the tires when you're trying to turn the wheel and prime it for the first time. So if they're like barely touching the ground, or almost off or a bit off completely that'll be ideal next you want to get your transmission fluid ready um, make sure it is ATF automatic transmission fluid which is the Decron 3 this one says it, it should be compatible um, so uh, it's nothing fancy just the regular stuff So I filled it over the max level right here. That's just in anticipation of bleeding the system. You don't want any air in your power steering fluid system. Um, so what we're gonna do next is turn the wheel left and right. So you see the fluid went down even though the car wasn't even on. So the, that meaning the pump wasn't even spinning. But uh, that's because I just moved the steering rack left and right, left and right. Um, let's fill this up again. So next what we're gonna do is start the vehicle, have the pump running, and then turn the car 
turn the wheel left and right. And remember, the car right now is on jack stands. I mean, on the jack, so there's no resistance on the wheels. As you can see, the level again went down. So you wanna make sure that it's at the right level, which I think right now it's a little bit high, but it should be okay. Um, but um, once I let it back on the ground with resistance on the wheel, we'll try doing the, uh, turning the wheel left and right, lock to lock a little bit more and get all the air out of the system. So as you can see, the level went back to almost normal. So I'm just gonna run the car like this. I'm not gonna take any of it out. We'll see how it does. Um, last thing you wanna do is just check for leaks. Touch the bottom, see if there's any water, I mean, any uh, transmission fluid. So there might be some residue from before. Make sure you clean it off, drive it around, and check for any uh, leaking fluids. So all put back to normal, and if you focus, I don't think you can hear that whirring noise anymore. It used to be a lot louder. So that's it. That's how you change a power steering pump. Now, in my case, I don't think it solved the issue. The power steering did get a lot better. It's easier to drive. It's more consistent feeling. However, the annoying whine is still there. So uh, if you have a clue what it is, please comment down below and let me know uh, so that way I can fix it. Um, if you're looking for more uh, Land Cruiser videos, make sure you go check out my channel. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe.